Oh, I guess no trying to farm a dire Look, this time. No guards. You think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I'd say good. We can march straight in. Actual criteria for getting the uh, four bar thing is and clearly it's not what it says in the description. I'll probably never figure it out before I finish the game. After this place, only got one continent left, so. Yeah, not that many places left in the game to go to. The East Scan, they got that one dungeon back that uh, by the dragon that I couldn't go into. That's it, pretty much it. Still here. Spiral ham. That was a considerably powerful enemy. They're sure they're the ex. one of each of you. I don't want to do it together. I'm going to die again. I'll put you alone, though. No problem. Twenty-seven is less than eight. Sure. Why wouldn't it be? We will need to be extremely wary. Sure, go ahead. Just, just do whatever you want to do. Did you think you could escape? At least it was the finisher, so that should have got some kind of bonus, something, right? 
I didn't do it, but sure. How sore all my fingers are. I know when I'm hitting a button because it physically hurts. As opposed to causing deep emotional scars. What fuckery is this? Multiple. Ooh, difficult puzzle. This looks like a pain in the ass. Do the thing! Do the thing! Goes off when I don't hit it, doesn't go off when I hit it ten fucking times. Can you tell I'm a little fed up with this game? Come on, really? These ruins... This feels like a sad place. Sad? In what way? Sorrow permeates this place. As if left behind by people who suffered torment and death. I guess that's a weird impression to get by just looking at some ruins, huh? I'd trust my feelings if I were you. They'll often lead you to the truth of things. Besides, what you're feeling would explain a thing or two about these ruins. It would? The Rather zombies? than attempting to impress visitors with beauty and opulence, the building and its passageways were built with strength and stability in mind. And that means... They were anticipating volcanic earthquakes. And they expected that someone might turn violent in these passageways. Not a bad observation. And what would bring such savage people to these halls? Surely they weren't just passing through. Then this passage must have led to somewhere. Some room or structure deeper within. A prison for the worst criminals. Or maybe a battle arena. And that's what gave you a sense of sadness. If it was an arena, then treasure for the victors might be hidden away somewhere. Why would it be hidden? Well, those fighter types might not have been all that nice. And the people who built this place seem to have been the cautious type. Hidden treasure, huh? Where do you think... Uh... Save your speculation for another day, you two. We have a Therian to find. No, we have treasure to find. Uh. So, about that treasure... Aizen! Ugh. We'll talk about this later, Lafayette. All right.
This Nordal. It looks a lot like Grimoire and Bienfu, but there's something different about it that I can't quite put my finger on. I agree. Those two are positively gloomy, but this doll seems calming, yet glamorous, too. Like I said, a quiet radiance. Yeah. You think so? I think it's more lethargic or absent-minded. Like I can't tell what's going on in its head. I can't. Either way, I'm a thousand times cuter than that thing. What's cute about you? People who keep their faces covered are creepy. <laughs> I don't know. There's definitely something off about it. It's charming, but a little ominous. Like I can never entirely be at ease around it, if that makes sense. You think so? Actually, I think it's cute. It reminds me of a little baby. You think this looks like a baby? I remember when my sister was about as small as that doll. She had the tiniest little hands. And she'd try to grip my pinky as best she could. Really? I'd take my pinky with her fingers wrapped around it and poke her cheek. And she'd just be all smiles. I swore to myself <laughs> I'd always do whatever I could to protect her. Once she got a little older and started fixing meals, lots of weird things began to happen around us. Wherever we went, she was in danger. Demons attacked us. A dragon tried to kidnap her. That's when I first realized what it was that I carried. That the cause of all my sister's pain was my blessing. My reaper's curse. So, you left her behind and went on your search for a way to break the curse. Right. And that's when I met Eifried. It was from him that I first heard about the Nordals. He thought the stories about them were all just baseless rumors. I guess we'll never know for sure unless we gather them all. But... Hmm? What is it? I think something good will happen once they're all together. Why do you say that? Well, because we found this doll, you shared some of your past with us. That makes me kind of happy. So I think we should get the other three, so more happy stuff happens. <laughs> Hard to argue with you there. Okay. Like I went the wrong way, which is the right way. This little piece is cleared. Another very complex puzzle, it looks like. Why even bother? and only
hate that trying to look around also makes the thing turn. So both joysticks make it turn. Right stick should just move the camera, not the actual board. I'll tell you how to design a game or anything. I missed another one of those on the other side. How's Medissa been acting? She's calm. It looks like letting her in on the truth worked as well as we thought it might. Good. Maybe she'll be easier to control now. Halt! Who are you? Who are you? Doesn't look good. What is that? No, I can't die here. Hi, Karen. Oh, can't a witch get a little downtime? Thank you. 
at the least life, so... And it's also got power link. Yeah. I should probably take these guys out. Did not hit that, but okay. Try not to waste souls. Can you really just use another one? What is with this fucking game in the Phantom Inn parts? I think it annoys me most when the triggers do it because of how many times I hit the fucking thing ten times and it doesn't go off and it just randomly goes off on its own. Really? Did it just do it again? Three times! I can't sleep in any other room. It's not her walking on my keyboard or some shit. It's the only other time I can think of I've had that kind of weird phantom input thing. When, like, she's laying down on, like, just slightly touching my keyboard and hitting some key. But that's not the case. I did laundry today. She's been sleeping on tiles ever since. Probably less than sanitary, but it's adorable, so I let her do it anyway. I also gave her a bath today, so feel uh, less icky about it. Trimmed her nails yesterday, and then I caught her trying to run off with the clippers and hide them. Snatched at her little mouth and hit it myself, so that she can't get to it. It's in the little secret drawer she can't get into, along with her catnip. Done for. That was far easier. Power link really counts for something, I guess. So, Medissa really is here. But what's this about the truth and controlling her? I am the truth. Wow, didn't let me pick up either of them. Just him the button. Gonna start not doing inputs out of combat now? Is that gonna be the new thing? No, it only makes sense. I mean, it wouldn't make sense, but it makes sense by this game's logic. Give clean hits like you use this mystic art, possibly. No, still can't use it. There we go. Oh, hello. 
Silver do for getting hit with the stun while I'm trying to spam the button. Okay. It's overdue for it, now I've doubled up on it. I can do that one, but okay. I refuse to fall here. Fiery things. And the other one's on the other side in about the same spot, and I just walked right past it. Yep. And the fog in my gamma. I do need to turn that shit down. I'm not roaming around in the dark on Conan. I don't really need my gamma. I did not hit start. Oh, that's not even the start button. Select. And a quick save is a thing, so we can do that. That is a button I don't think I've hit my entire playthrough of this game. And it just kind of randomly popped up there. I haven't hit it so much that I didn't even know it was select that brings that menu up. No dust. That's this is. Up a PS drop. A barrier. She's a Therian. You're a Therian. Third time's the charm, eh, kid? Yeah. You're Medissa. I am. And who might you be? We're like you. We carry grudges against the Abbey. And Shepherd Artorius. It's gonna be okay. We came to get you out of here, Medissa. There's no escape. What? Please, don't give up. I can- No, you don't understand. There's no escape for you. If you dare sully Shepherd Artorius's ideals and the light the Abbey shines upon the world, I will kill you all! 
Who would have guessed that Medissa has snakes? Why are you doing this? Uh, she's the Abby's lucky now. Way to jinx it, Rokuro. What the fuck? Don't be what the fuck. That was hard. They just keep coming. Giggity. That snake woman keeps summoning them. If we don't go after her directly, there'll be no end to it. Your left hand. <laughs> don't tell me you're the calamity. Why are you doing this, Medissa? Why fight for the Abbey after they forced you to become a Therian? They didn't. I became one of my own free will. But your daughter, slain at an exorcist's hands! You must hate the Abbey for that, don't you? Oh, I feel hate. Toward a world where demons spawn from the people's malevolence! You know about malevolence? The exorcist told me the truth. Diana turned into a demon because of the malevolence she radiated. I knew what I had to do. Become a Therian, and devour malevolence so that such a tragedy would never repeat itself. It matters not what dreadful form my body may take. I will revive Enomenot and change this wretched world! If that's how it is, fine. We'll take you by force! I'm going to end this! Your death will not be in vain! This woman! She's just a grieving mother! It doesn't matter! Crush them off! They're a police! You wronged me! Here's your justice! Fight in order! No mercy! Wounds that won't heal! Hard to deflect! You son of a bitch, game. White armor guys, big armor guys. It does not fit with the theme. The snakes made sense. This does not. Make a sonic drop! Take that! Don't bow! Don't 
can't do that one, but okay. No mercy! You thought I'd stop there. Annihilating? It's over. Curse you, Lord of Calamity. Lord of Calamity? That's the name of the Demon Lord who will bring about the Age of Chaos. The unrepentant embodiment of malevolence, whose blind pursuit of self-gratification will rain destruction upon the world. The irredeemable, uncontrollable personification of human sins. An evil like you! Yeah, wrong person. Demon. Therian. Lord of Calamity. Call me whatever you like. But if I'm the supposed Lord of Demons, then you're just a minion to be used as I please. Nothing more. No, I refuse. What happened to my Diana was my fault. That's why I will fight you until my dying breath! Stop! Don't get in my way! No! Enough mothers have died. I won't let you join them! Eleanor and Kamawana... They both lost their mothers, too. It's a terrible thing. Kamawana? A little girl that the Abbey forcefully made into a Therian. Her mother tried to save her, but she failed. All she could do was to offer her own life to fill her child's empty stomach. <sighs> Kamawana's been crying ever since. She misses her mother. If you die here, I can only imagine how sad that would make your Diana. Diana! You don't need me anymore, Mom. I get it. You love this new dad more than your own daughter! No, honey. I did it for you. But you really thought I stopped loving you. And the malevolence made you into a demon. It's all my fault. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Forgive me, Diana. <sighs> Medissa. She'll be all right. She's just unconscious. Let's grab her and haul her back. I'll place her under a binding art, just in case. Hmm. Gotta hand it to the Abbey. Very resourceful, taking advantage of Medissa's regrets like that. Making her into a Therian who would do their bidding. It's... It's just so cruel. Who cares? Reason above all, no. It's true. The way I feel goes against all reason. There's no telling what'll happen to Helifis once we take Medissa out of here. Well, you know, the usual. And yet I'm doing exactly that, all on account of my own hang-ups. Even crushing Medissa's honest resolve. According to reason, malevolence is the fault of the individual. You assume no responsibility or guilt for what happens to them. I refuse to turn a blind eye to the consequences of my actions. I chose this path to seek the truth, not to deny it. If I'm to betray reason, then that is the very least I should do. You're too much, you know that? You and Medissa both. Quit overthinking things. Just blame all the suffering on the Lord of Calamity. Makes life easier. Velvet, I... I'm not trying to cheer you up. I'm just saying it doesn't bother me. Whatever's coming, I can handle it.
That life bottle because nobody died. Another path to the future. Ooh, what? what? I did not see anything there, but okay. wondering, do you think I hurt Medissa, saying that stuff to her back there? I suppose you might have. But I was thinking the exact same things you were. Losing a mother. It's always a tragedy. I'm glad you stepped in and stopped her. Thanks. <sighs> that Eleanor. I swear, she feels way more responsibility for everything than she needs to. You think we need to worry? What if she pushes too far and erupts with malevolence? Malevolence is born out of many things. A prideful ego. The self-righteousness that turns a blind eye to one's inner contradictions. Eleanor is different. She's mindful of her ego and strives to confront her inconsistencies of character. She has a purity of heart that won't be tainted by the emotions that create malevolence. No other quality is as essential for an exorcist. So she's probably okay? For now, at least. But human hearts can be fickle things. Who knows what the future holds? Eh, I'd 
doubt you got anything to worry about. For most exorcists, purity is a construct of the Abbey's teachings. But Eleanor, she's the real deal. <laughs> she's not your average exorcist, I'll give you that. Purity is handy for any exorcist. But more than that, it's a rare and precious temperament for living. Everybody's got an ego and certain internal contradictions to some degree. Facing one's own ugliness in an honest manner is never easy. To be a normal human is to live carrying malevolence. It's just how much you let it control you that varies. I guess malevolence might just be a fact of life, huh? But Artorius can't accept that. Well, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Let's slip through town and head for Titania before that changes. Okay, back on rails. Let me stop and go to the shop or anything. I was gonna go to so the shop your and consider hideout. going back for the, Once the I get dire free, fucking battle again. Won't stand but, a okay. chance. You all had better sleep with one eye open. Look then how come the I surrogate am. to that annoying child. Welcome back! Oh, that one. Of course, these That's two are gonna have an interaction. Life. Become friendly. <laughs> She's the same age as Diana. Did the Abbey really turn someone so young into a Therian? <sighs> throw this thing in the river. Ocean, whatever. None of that. Dissa, please, would you be able to talk to her? Is this a trick? How could I predict this turn of events before even meeting the character? Me oh, because the game is predictable as fuck. She's still a normal little girl who misses her mother. I can't do anything to console her, no matter what I try. But if it were you... You okay? You can call me Medissa, all right? Do I scare you, honey? A little bit. I had a bad... She would never... Your mother would never think that about her daughter. But... Because I'm... I'm a mother too. Mothers always love their children, no matter what. Bullshit! No matter if we die. No matter how the world changes. So that uh, fucking bunch of crackheads out there. There's nobody who loves you more in the world than... Then... It's okay. I hope Kamawana and Medissa won't have to feel so lonely anymore. I hope they're yeah. out of the story Trying completely. Trying to stop the waterworks gets old fast. Listen, if it's not too personal, was your mother... Uh... She's dead. I lost her when I was even younger than you. Oh. Never I'm established sorry to hear that. actual age. It's fine. It just means we Damn. have things in common. So no feeling sad and alone, okay? Oh no, I'm fine. I don't feel lonely or anything. I swear. What's gotten into you? You're so strange sometimes. No, I'm not. Eleanor, 
I'll have you watch over Kamoana and Medissa. Yes, of course. I'd be honored. Thank you. Our Elvis is the only one whose age has been established. Grand Puba of Calamity or whatever. Sh sure, why not? Besides, the Demon Lord ought to not trouble herself over such trivialities. Velvet, Grimoire is calling for you. She says to bring Lafayette and meet her at the observation tower. Got it. We better get going then. How about you just teleport me there and have the cutscene? Instead of making me walk there. What is the turtle gun? I want to buy shit. All kinds of gripes. Hey, do you all have mothers? Hmm? Where'd that question come from? Well, after hearing that Velvet, Kamuana, and Eleanor all lost their parents, I just got curious. My mother was a strict, frightening woman, but she died a long time ago. I see. I have no parents either, but the wicked witch who took me in said I was born from a peach that floated down the river. Coming from you, I'd almost believe that. A and you, Aizen? We Malakim are formed from untainted mana. Sometimes humans are reborn as Malakim, but they retain no memory of their previous lives. In other words, we don't have blood relations like humans do. I see. By the time I was aware of anything around me, I was already tethered in being called number two. I suppose having no mother means I don't have any memories before that. I told Medissa that losing a mother is painful, but I can't know how painful it is. Go easy on him, Aizen. He's just a kid. I'm just telling it like it is. But listen to me, Lafie said. You can share deep connections with other people, even if you don't have a biological family. Malakim too can does. form precious bonds. Because he's a reincarnation. Even Which family. they just dropped the hint That's of right. when they said Malakim can be born of humans. If they weren't true in your heart. You really think so? I'm sure of it. It's far better than being a witch born from a peach. Nonsense! There's no nobler way to be born! I have an everlasting friendship with a dog, a monkey, a pheasant, and Bienfu. I hope he's right. Thanks for letting me know she's not in the close, easy one to get to, and I have to go waste my time walking over here. can have familial ties, but what makes you and your sister siblings if you're not related by blood? Well, a very long time ago, I was born into this world from an earth pulse point up on a sacred mountain. I remained in that place for a long while, and then one day, she was born from the very same earth pulse point. Before we knew it, we had wound up living together under the same roof. Are two Malakim always siblings if they come from the same Earth Pulse point? No. Other Malakim were born there, but I never felt like they were my family. But something, I don't know what, was different with her. If she was sad, I'd feel sad. And if I was happy, she'd be happy too. She can be abrasive, but when she smiles, it's like nothing else. I swore to myself that whatever happened, I would protect her. I made a pendant from a stone on that sacred also mountain look alike. and gave it to her as a lucky charm. Of course, she just wears it as a necklace. And your pendant? Did she give that to you? She had the same idea I had. She made the pendant herself and gave it to me as a good luck charm. Without either of us having mentioned a word of it beforehand, 
We each gave each other pendants in the same shape on the very same day. That's when I really knew that what I had felt all along was true. We were brother and sister. Is that her in the picture? Yeah. It's a self-portrait she drew for me on the day I left home. Did you draw her a picture of yourself? No. I don't exactly have an artistic side. Well, I'm sure that if you looked inside her pendant, you'd find a portrait of the person who matters most to her. I hope so. Yeah, and it would be nice if it was you. <sighs> Oh, oh, time there you two are. Hi, teacher. Have you made progress deciphering the book? I have indeed. It turns out there was a second counting song. I've already transcribed it. Would you read it aloud for us, child? Okay. Um, when the eight malevolences overflow, in the culmination of mankind's despair, and Nomenot will bring an end to all peoples and restore them to time immemorial. Four Empyreans shall wield a wrathful sword and cleave the great devourer, two asunder to sleep beneath the earth as scarlet moonlight illuminates the evil. The nameless Empyrean hath one heart. The nameless Empyrean hath one body. Oh, yet more delightful material to keep us awake at night. If I'm understanding this right, it's discussing the specific nature of Inominat? That's what I believe, yes. When the eight malevolences overflow in the culmination of mankind's despair, Inominat will bring an end to all peoples. So, when the world is at peak malevolence, Inominat will use that power to bring an end to all. Is that it? He's going to wipe out all of humanity? Is that what the Abbey is after? Is that why they've been trying to bring back Inominat? No. Artorius is not that kind of man. His two primary ideals are the many over one, and the restoration of order through will and reason. He sacrificed Luffy to protect this world, not to eradicate it. You mean that's who he is as far as you know, yeah? People change, Velvet. Perhaps the Shepherd gave up hope. Maybe he lost faith in mankind. Fools prone to sin, endlessly generating malevolence. He's not like that. If that's all true, then what point was there in Luffy's death? Is there anything else in that book? Yes and no. This copy itself is incomplete. There ought to be further pages, but they're missing. For now, I've done all I can. <sighs> there must be an original somewhere, right? Without it, I doubt the Abbey would be plotting Inominat's revival. We can be sure they have complete understanding of their Empyrean's nature. But this was the only copy in the royal villa. If the original is out there, who knows where it could be? <sighs> it's getting pretty late. Why don't we call it a day? Yeah, let's get some rest. Big ass temple where Nominat's at? No. You don't get to talk. She's warm. That's great. She's gonna help me. Ooh, huh? Uh, I couldn't. It's okay. I, um, I. Hey, Kamalana. Did you know? Dial started to grow a brand new tail. Wow, really? He's up at the observation tower. Let's go see. But uh, all right. But don't run, or you'll trip. <sighs> Thanks, Eleanor. I appreciate it. <laughs> Having some girl trouble, my little Malik? I'm just glad Kamawana and Medissa are starting to feel better. 
Yeah, they both still have a long way to go. Fucking pedophiles made this game. Smiling. We've got bigger things to worry about. Hurry up and locate the next Earth Pulse point. Right. Okay. Must you always be so blunt, Velvet? I must, in fact. We're up against the Abbey here, and sooner or later they'll find this place. That's true, but still. Do we go find another hideout? No, we'll keep on the offensive. We'll capture the remaining Therians before the Abbey finds us. As a swordsman, I can respect that mindset. I'm not so sure we could hold this place anyway. We've got no obligation to. I found another Earth Pulse point. It's in the eastern part of East Gand, I think. But that's... All right. We're headed for East Gand. Then our first stop should be Port Taliesin. Grimoire always looks like she never wants to do any work. But despite all her grumbling, when she starts a job, she gets it done. And quickly, too. She's frank, but she still takes care not to say anything to hurt anyone's feelings. I have to say, I, I like that in a woman. It's charming. Well, sorry if I'm inconsiderate and charmless then. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. You're all still so young and have led different lives. Can't fault you for being you. Well, if you're saying we lack a certain air of maturity, I might not 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 disagree. That's for sure. It's true Lord Artorius has scolded my lack of composure at times. Although I do get the impression that Grimoire has been dependable like that since she was young. And it's a good impression at that. Old Grim's been that way since the day she was born. I hate to admit it, but her combination of insightful words and deadpan expression has charmed the hearts of many a Moloch. At her peak, she had a fan club 8,848 members strong, and her dinner shows would sell out the day the tickets went on sale. Malachim came by the droves to doze off listening to her live readings of ancient books. Wow! I had no idea she was so popular. Yeah, she's even a regular feature in Who's Who Among Norman. Now that I think about it, I could see how a person could interpret her lethargy as patience and her vague dispassion as maturity and poise. Compared to her, I'm just... <sighs> Were you just trying to imitate her? <sighs> no, I didn't mean to. Whether you meant to or not, that kind of felt like her just now. I can see it in you, waiting to be awakened. That sophisticated charm. Me? Sophisticated and charming? I don't know. Try talking like her. You know how she lets her sentences trail off. This is your make-or-break moment here. Uh, all right. I think I know what you mean. Here goes nothing. Oh... What do you think, Laffy said? Do I sound like her? It feels a little off, but you're definitely doing it, I think. Aw, <sighs> oh, you don't have to grow up, Madame Eleanor! You are cute just the way you are! <sighs> you stay out of this, Bianfu! When mankind's despair reaches its pinnacle, Inomi not shall reach out and bring an end to all. So that song bothers you too? No matter how many times I read it, I don't see any good in it. Understanding that ancient tongue is difficult, right? Perhaps there's another interpretation? Maybe the end to all actually means an end to all human suffering, for example. That is a possibility. But we're far too lacking in material to know anything for sure. We need the other half of that book, or some other text on the Nominat. We don't have the time to search for it. Wouldn't even know where to start looking. And don't forget that that book is just a copy. Whoever transcribed it might have made an error, too. That's an unexpectedly sharp insight coming from you. I'm an expert at errors. When Miss Mogilu made me copy magic tomes for her, I did it pretty half-heartedly. Didn't that cause a lot of problems? Well, when she tried to cast a spell from one of the tomes, the spell exploded in her face. It's really her own fault, though. She told me to copy 100 books in three days! That's impossible! Oh, how cruel! Cruel is right! 
That witch is a real devil, I tell you. A slave driver. Bien Fu, let's go somewhere a little more private, shall we? <laughs> Miss Moggy Lou. Hush now. There's no need to worry. I'll make it a half-hearted punishment. <laughs> That I really care, but who ended up winning the fishing competition when we were trying to catch a Therian? Man, that was a while ago. I lost because I came away with nothing. No, it was a draw. As I'm sure everyone remembers, all I fished up were octopus demons. We were competing over who would catch the Therian. Demons didn't count, so my score was 0-2. No, the loss is mine and I'm not giving it to you. That's not just something you can up and decide like that. In fact, by fishing up those octopus demons, I put everyone in danger. That should count for negative points. I lost. Who cares? It was all in fun. I care. Every competition must have a winner and a loser, no matter what. That's just how I see it. Yeah, I'm with Eisen on this one. It doesn't do anyone any good to make the final results murky. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Eisen, your curse would mean that the odds were stacked against you from the start. That doesn't make for a fair competition, does it? Yeah, she's got a good point. We'll just have to settle the score some other way. What can you guys do? Play cards? Chess? What? Cards are a no-go for me. I'll just end up drawing jokers. And I can play shogi, but I don't know chess. <laughs> then what about arm wrestling? Would that work? Whoa, whoa! Having a demon and a Moloch clasp hands is just asking for trouble with malevolence. You're both adults, so why not a drinking contest? That's it! If we have a drinking contest, we'll be able to compete on an even playing field. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'll have the crew bring out the drinks. Well, that's one way of resolving it, I suppose. Whatever gets it done, I'm not gonna complain. If you guys are gonna have a drinking contest, you're gonna need some tasty snacks to go with all that alcohol, right? Definitely! Let's go out and fish us some snacks. Yeah, let's take out the little boat. We can even pick up where we left off our fishing competition. Didn't we just figure out he can't really fish? Ugh, we were just about to finally resolve this mess. Why'd you have to go and stick your nose into it? What? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do anything wrong! Bien! Already start skipping his dialogue too. Hey, get this! I was out fishing the other day when, before I knew it, I'd wound up near a class four island. Once I realized what was happening, I tried to turn the ship around, but then it got dark all around me. Was it a sudden storm? I wish it was this great monstrous bird. Damn thing had wings big enough to cover up the whole blasted sky. That sounds like a bit of a stretch to me. You think I'm lying? Then check it out for yourself. You just might not make it back alive. A huge bird. Hmm. Bird. This island's really something. No way I'd want to go to prison here, but it'd make a great hideout. If I'm gonna be left in charge of this place, I'll turn it into the best hideout ever. You're in charge? Someone has to look after this place while you're all running around. Maintaining the ships in the base, watching the Prince and Medissa, keeping Kamoana company. I'll keep this place running ship shape, so that you all can focus on looking for the Therians. But those are just odd jobs anyone can do. You're a navigator. Isn't that a waste of your talents? You dolt! These are important tasks! Someone's gotta do it! We've got another navigator, but is there anyone besides me that could handle all of this by themselves? Besides, ever since I lost my tail, my balance has been off. The seasickness is killing me! That's your story and you're sticking to it? Tell the truth. You don't want to come because you're afraid you'll be hurt again. Uh, no. That's not it at all. <laughs> I said his tail starting to grow back. Still can't go down to fucking assault. 
the fuck? It's the only place I really want to go. Fuck with some birds. Good at beating up the weak ones. Rising Falcon! Take that! The 
Dungeon has just in, so it's a little harder, right? Doesn't seem like it. Random input. on top of it.
get some kind of unique little sight thing. Underwhelming. What's it called? Telesin. Oh, you go to that southern island where I actually want to go. How about that? No? <laughs> Nightmare? Sour. So you've kept your sense of taste. In my dreams I have. Nowhere else. Does that make this a dream? It would have to be, wouldn't it? After all... I devoured you. That's right. Don't you go forgetting it. How could I ever forget it? The taste of your... Pussy! <sighs> How could I ever... Looks like the fog's rolling in. Yep. Eleanor, there's something I want to be sure we get perfectly clear. Um, alright. What is it? Luffy said is not your little Moloch. What? That's all you wanted to say? You realize he doesn't belong to you either, right? Indeed I do. Luffy sets his own person, and not anyone else's. Y you're right. Malakim aren't just tools to be used by exorcists as they pleased. I'll be more careful not to forget that. Good, as long as we're on the same page. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of reminders, you haven't forgotten our little bet, have you, Velvet? You mean the 100 gold on whether I'd break? No. I haven't forgotten. A word of caution. People can fight against pain, but they can't fight against happiness. If you're keen on winning our bet, I'd steer clear of ill-fitting dreams. Sorry to break it to you, but all I have anymore are nightmares. Horrible nightmare where she could taste an apple. The fox cleared. Good thing we didn't wind up getting lost in it. Of course we didn't. Who do you think is running this ship? A bunch of shameless rogues who are very good at shameless roguery. Damn straight. But it's strange. These waters don't usually see much fog. Here. I knew about that quick save a little sooner when I was doing the dire farming. I would have been saving between battles. Well, I guess since I've learned about it, I haven't saved after every battle, but whatever. Like a castle. This used to be the base of operations for a rich trading family. When trouble came knocking, they were ready for it, to say the least. Wow! They must have had a lot of enemies. But that was a long time ago. Nowadays, it's just another town in the middle of nowhere. But even so, to us, it was the big city of our dreams. You know this area well. I grew up near here. Keep on going, and you'll run into a ball. My home village. Then... Letharian is... Yeah, somewhere in my village. Is that okay? No one will know me there. Only been three years. Everyone I knew, I already devoured. 
Oh yeah, that whole thing. I just love the feel of the sun on my face. I'm glad the fog finally cleared up. For days it was so thick, you couldn't see past your own nose. We're lucky a demon didn't show up in all that fog. Hmm? Nisgan hasn't had much demon trouble to speak of. Didn't you know that? During the advent, towns all across Eastgand were attacked by demons. It was Lord Artorius who saved us. Ever since, our towns have seen almost no demon attacks. Is that true? Oh. Pardon me, Lady Exorcist, but if you're with the Abbey, surely you've heard about how things are here in Eastgand. Of course, demons are lurking about outside our towns, but for whatever reason, they don't attack us where we live. That sounds unbelievable. Everyone who visits us from abroad says the same thing, but this is neither joke nor lie. Everyone says that Lord Artorius's power lingers here, protecting our town against the demons. Whatever the reason, you're safe here. Relax, and please, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. We appreciate it. Why do demons avoid these towns? Demons in it right now. Don't feel like doing the gear maintenance. It's such a pain in the ass. You're travelers, right? How are other towns doing? Is the demon blight as bad as they say? Demons are attacking cities all the world over, and the demon blight is spreading like wildfire. It's nuts. That's terrible. Living in this town, I almost forgot about the demons. There hasn't been a case of demon blight here since the advent. Nothing much has changed over the past three years. Yeah. This town's the same as it's always been. You've been here before? Many times. Really now? Wait, there is something that changed. The prickle bore meat. The prickle bore meat? Yep, it's gotten much easier to get your hands on high quality tasty meat. The hunters are probably able to do so well because they don't have to worry about demon attacks. Well, I hope you enjoy your return to Taliesin. Have fun. A town without demons. Hmm. Could be there's a Therian at the Earth Pulse Point in Eastgan that's devouring the malevolence. What do you think? That would certainly explain things. There's Therians absorbing malevolence all over the world, so... It really makes sense. Good day. How are you looking, Taliesa? I bet you're surprised not to see any exorcists. Yeah. I've never been to a town like this. The exorcists stationed in Eastgand often leave to help deal with problems in other parts of the world. Then again, few are stationed here to begin with. 
Are they on another of those expeditions now? That's right. They're currently in Northgand, helping put down a group of dangerous demons. Even though they're gone, we still have regular exorcist patrols stop by. We feel safe enough with them. Maybe they should just move the capital to East Gand. Of course, I know there's no way that would happen. <laughs> I think a town that isn't being attacked by demons in a world being attacked oh, by demons, damn. With, you know. I forgot today was the day people. Nico was coming. I missed out on buying that special quiche. <sighs> That's too bad. I wish she'd just open up a shop here. You'd think it would be easier than always having to make the long trek from a ball. I heard she doesn't want to leave the village because she's waiting for her missing friend to return. What are you talking about? A ball's nothing but a ruin. What? Well, you're a morbid young woman. Sure, the place was hit pretty bad by a demon a few years ago, but it's not like it's abandoned. Many of the villagers were hurt, but thanks to Lord Artorius, nearly all of them survived in the end. That can't be... It certainly is. In fact, there's a girl from there, Nico, who comes here once a week to sell things. Just yesterday, my husband sent medicine to the general store there and got some juicy prickle bore meat in return. That can't be right. I... With my own hand, I... Velvet? What's going... Velvet said a ball was wiped off the map, but it sounds like someone's been coming from there with things to sell. Do you think a new group of settlers moved in? Apparently that merchant Nico is someone Velvet knows. She said something about Artorias having saved the village. Do you think it had something to do with the Earth Pulse point? I can't say. We've heard too many conflicting things. This feels wrong to me. Really, really wrong. We won't find the truth by wandering blindly in the dark. The path forward is our only way. Right. It's not like we can turn back. But Miss Mogulu, what if there's darkness ahead too? Then we'll take a nice nap together. Forever, probably. Oh. But the whole village reincarnated as Malakim, something like that. That festival over in a ball sure was fun, wasn't it? It sure was. What a cheerful and happy place. And the food was amazing. I'd love to go back sometime. I loved the prickle boar meatballs. Nico's quiche was so good. It was a master quiche. This Nico must be a great cook. I'd love to try this master quiche. <laughs> Where did you learn a joke like that? Anyway, Taliesin's Fisherman Festival is coming up soon. We've got to show the folks from a ball a good time. Yeah, I'm going to help my uncle catch lots of tasty fish for the festival. What do you think you'll catch? Uh, pickled mackerel... Tuna rolls. Oh, and duck stew. <laughs> Those are all the names of dishes, silly. And a duck isn't a fish. It's a bird. I swear, you don't think of anything but food. Nico's quiche. That's everywhere. Ask me what this town's known for. Answer, stairs. Yeah, I've never seen this many stairs before in my life. You're close to the sea and the weather is beautiful and everything, but doesn't all this climbing make life here hard? Not at all. I've walked the stairs here since I was a child. A little climb like this is nothing. 
Everyone raised here has a strong set of legs and a Demons scary aren't attacking back. because everyone's got cardio. Turn a profit selling back medicine here. No way, no how. that back there Can't go back. We'll just have to go there and see for ourselves. Which way is your village? It's far to the east. Through the Morgana woods. I wonder what Velvet's hometown is like. A ball? I've heard about it from other sailors, although that was a long time ago. They said it's a fairly plain place, and it's home to rustic, hospitable folk. That sounds like any country village to me. I wonder if Velvet used to be rustic and hospitable. Oh, you mean to say she's devious and rude now? N not at all. <laughs> It's okay, you can admit it. It's pretty much the truth. Well, I imagine she was a plain, hard-working girl. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You really believe that? Call it a guess, really. I bet she was a cheerful, loving sister. Maybe so. Hmm. And now she's the Lord of Calamity. If she sees her former friends, maybe she'll remember some of what she's lost. But what has she lost? Yeah, her brother, for one thing. That's yeah, been pretty well established by this point. Anyways. Yeah, it was almost two hours. That's a good time for a break.